Hey, back here on Inside Wrestling Radio, and it's a thrill for me today to have on the show one of the legendary characters ever in wrestling, uh, Jimmy the Boogie Woogie Man Vagot. For people who, who are familiar with Jimmy, everybody loved him. He was always a great character on television in the NWA days. I was always personally a big fan as well, so it's a thrill for me. He started back in 1964 as Big Jim Vallon in the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. I, I, I'm interested to hear some of those stories. And in the 70s, he was Handsome Jimmy Vagot. In the 80s, he was NWA with uh, Crockett there. So, But right now, uh, welcome to the program, Handsome Jimmy Vagot. How you doing today, my brother? Hey, my brother. Thanks of all. Hey, first of all, Ricky, man, thanks for having me on, brother. Hey, I'm a big fan of yours and Inside Wrestling, man. And, uh, hey, when I ever get to see you, brother, in person, man, I'm going to get your autograph. I want to take a picture with you, brother. And, uh, hey, you're my brother, man. <laughs> hey, I, pr- I appreciate the kind words, Boogie Woogie. And, and I'm telling you right now, like I said earlier, um, I've always been a fan of yours. And I grew up on uh, NWA Wrestling here in, here in uh, South Carolina, and that was the big thing here. And, and Boogie Woogie, man, was always a, a stable of the NWA. But before before we get into the NWA stuff, tell me about the World Wide Wrestling Federation. You worked for Vince Sr., huh? Exactly, yeah. I uh, wrestled uh, three different times for WWWF at the time, you know, and uh, of course, uh, the Vince McMahon, the, the, the fan see today, uh, I worked for his father, uh, Vince Sr., exactly, and uh, first time I went there was 1970, 71, you know, and uh, I stayed 15 months there, and uh, then in 73 and 4, I came back uh, with Johnny, Johnny Valiant at 74, and uh, we won the WWWF uh, World Tag Team uh, Championship belts from uh, Dean uh, Ho and uh, Tony Gurria. And, uh, Ricky, we were, uh, at that time, we held the uh, World uh, uh, Tag Team uh, the Federation belts uh, for the longest uh, that anybody ever had. I don't know, uh, probably now I'm sure it's been beat, but uh, we held them for 13 months, and uh, we stayed there at that time. I, again, I stayed there 15 months. And then in 1978, 79, I went back uh, for my last time and uh, for again over a year. And that's when they brought in uh, Gentleman Jerry uh, Valiant, of course, with Luscious Johnny and uh, myself, Handsome Jimmy. And uh, we had the three Valiant brothers in there at that time. Uh, it was great, man. It was great. It was the biggest uh, territory in the world, you know, of course. It is now WWE and continue, you know, they're all over the world. But uh, at that time, it was the biggest because Vince Sr., man, he always said we played to the population. And, man, you know, we had all the big cities, you know, but the Boston Gardens, you know, to uh, uh, all the way to uh, Washington, D.C. We, we wrestled at the Philadelphia, man, you know, of course, uh, the mecca of uh, professional wrestling and all venue is uh, Madison Square Garden, sure, New York yeah. City. So, uh, we were there once a month, you know. It was great. Wow, that, that had to be a, a thrill. And, and, and you were just a young guy at that time, so I'm sure that had to be a, a thrill getting out there and working for those huge fans. Uh, you bet, brother. You know, you know, uh, walking down uh, uh, Madison Square Garden, brother, man, you know, first time just a young kid in the early 20s, man. And, uh, man, it was the, the big break uh, that uh, Vince Sr. gave me, you know. At that time, uh, uh, Vinny, you know, which uh, the, the Vince McMahon now, which we took it to a whole new level, of sure. course. But the, he, wasn't, he wasn't there. He was still in college, you know, or a uh, school and and. Then he came back. Of course, when I was in there in, in 74, of course, he was commentating. And then, of course, in 78, 9, he was also commentating. And uh, I worked for him and his father, you know, the, the, at that time. But, uh, yes, it, it, it was it, it was just great stuff, man. Absolutely. And, and after you left the WWF, uh, you went out to uh, Memphis and worked with Jerry Lawler. And ha- I heard you had some great success out there with, with Lawler in, in those days as well. Tell us a little about, about working with Lawler. Yeah, Lawler, had, man, he was... He, he, He's the ultimate, brother. He's a total package. He can do it all, man. He can talk, you know, of course he can wrestle, man. I mean, he's he just a phenomenal, you know, he's still continuing going. We had one of the biggest feuds, you know, going, you know. I went in there in 1977, you know, handsome Jimmy, man, and, uh, and me and him, uh, we were worked at uh, Memphis the Coliseum every Monday night for, uh, you know, years, you know, sold it out, brother, man, and, and we did everything we could, and then we teamed up, and then... You know, then we busted loose again and went at each other again, man. Had every type of match you could think of, you know, uh, yeah. from tar and feather to uh, head shavings to, uh, man, being run out of uh, town on a rail, man, to, to man, he, he won my uh, Corvette, man. He won my old lady. He won <laughs> all my money. He won my house. He, you know, it, it was just a terrific uh, uh, thing. And it's still going on, you know. You know, the whole thing is, man, you know, uh, every time, uh, once a year or so, they, they they call me in. Uh, they bring the veterans in, the, and uh, the legends. They they have a big legend deal there, and, and they bring me in. And 
me and Laura will still tangle up and uh, get in there and, and do something, you know. So it's it's a longest running feud uh, ever, brother, because it, it's been going on for thirty years now. <laughs> sure, absolutely, and, and that's that's great. And the thing I like about it is is that you're still out there, man. And I, I see you still here uh, locally. You'll come to, into South Carolina and do some shows even even today. That, you know, that just speaks to to the people still, you know, just just love you and remember you from from back in those uh, those wild days. Jimmy, tell me a little bit about the the famous look you had with that. that that big long ZZ Top beer. Tell us about how that look came about. Yeah, well, I, you know, I was handsome, Jimmy. Man, you know, uh, <laughs> I was uh, one of the first blondes, uh, clean shaven, good body, strutting around. You know, uh, sure. uh, in the '60s, in the '70s, and then uh, in the '80s, '90s, man, uh, I looked around and man, there's uh, blondes everywhere doing what I was doing. And and you know, uh, I went into uh, Mid Atlantic 1981, and you know, there was uh, of course Ric Flair and and Buddy Landell and just two of them, you know, of course, big major stars, and, and they got the long blonde hair strutting around, good bodies, and yeah. I said, well, hey, man, I've done this for 20 years. It's time to reinvent myself. So, uh, hey, I threw my razor away, grew a big beard, a ZZ <laughs> top beard, exactly, man, and, and I came out to music first, you know, to, uh, nobody was doing it there, brother. I came out to music, and, uh, you know, you got to do something different, you know, so, so uh, not only was the music different, the long beard was different. I call myself the man always jimmy valiant uh, ricky but uh, boogie woogie man and, and then i, I said i gotta do something different so i started uh, dancing going out to the um, <laughs> to the people man and and hey i started hugging and kissing everybody man nobody did that man right. i kissed man uh, a man men men women children uh, uh, uncles aunts grandma grandpa man uh, green black blue purple white it didn't matter who or what man i kissed everybody in sight going to the ring and, and back out right. and nobody did that see so it was a different deal and then the music man music make you just jump man you know and sure. start da- getting up on your feet man and testifying brother man <laughs> and and so it was just uh, electric and uh, it just uh, took off and uh the Boogie Woogie Man was born. Sure, absolutely. And you mentioned your music there, Boogie. And I got to tell you, tell you something real quick. This morning on the way into the studio here, I was I couldn't get that uh, Boy from New York City theme out of my head because I knew I was going to be talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> you. You know, you know, Ricky, man, I'll tell you, you talking about uh, South Carolina, man, and North Carolina. And uh, I, I've been all over the world, brother, man, you know. And, and I, I tell people, man, the greatest fans in, in, in the world, man, they're right there in uh, North and South Kakalaki, baby. You know, I just... Love the people there, the, the great wrestling fans, and, and you, you're right. I do uh, continue going uh, out. You know, uh, I have a wrestling camp here. You know, in Charlottesville, Virginia, and I take my students out. Man, this is 20 years I've been here, and it's something I want to invite you, uh, Ricky, and everybody listening to. If you're ever in the great state of Virginia on a Sunday, 12 to 4, please come by, be my guest. This is something my lovely wife Angel and I self, myself put together. We give back to the wrestling fans because once you get here, everything's free. You can go in the Hall of Fame, the museum, watch the kids train. We have matches. Everything's free, brother. So, uh, hey, check it out, JimmyValiant.com. There's a map how to get there, and I hope to see you some Sunday right here. Ab- absolutely, Jimmy, and we appreciate that invitation. We'll talk a little bit more about that. We're up on a break right now, Boogie, and when we get back, I want to talk about some of those NWA days, and I want to talk about the uh, the Army there against Paul Jones, and, and I also want to talk about Charlie Brown. You got it. <laughs> and we'll talk about all that stuff when we get right back here on Inside Wrestling Radio with Jimmy Vallette. 